Hey guys, it's Charlene. Today I'm going to share with you how to make the perfect nighttime sky. So let's dive in. To create an awesome nighttime scene on your cards, starting with a moon is a great idea. I'm using the brand new Haunted Moon Blending Stencil from Pick Event Studios. This is a layering stencil and there's two different sizes. I'm using the larger, but there is also a smaller moon stencil. So when you're creating a moon on your cards, it's really important not to just leave it white. You could give it a warm glow or a cool glow depending on the look that you're going for. If you want to give it a warm glow, you can work with really light browns, light yellows, or even warm grays. If you want to give it more of a cool glow, I suggest working with kind of cool grays, even some cool purples, things like that. This is a layering stencil. So what I did is I went ahead and put down the large layer of the stencil first, and I came in with some antique linen, which is a very light yellowish brown, and I gave it a once over of that color. I then added the second layer of the stencil, and it has kind of these darker spots, and I added a heavier layer of that antique linen color. And now I'm coming in with my third stencil, which is gonna kind of create more of these large shadow areas. So if you ever look up at the moon at nighttime, you'll see that it's got kind of these darker areas, these lighter areas, and how you lay these stencils down really doesn't matter. Nobody's gonna be looking too closely about how you put your stencils down on your card, if you've got them in the right spaces, the little, valleys and dips and everything like that. Really what's important is that this gives your moon a lot of texture and variation. If you don't have any kind of moon stencil, you could use a circle to accomplish a similar look as this card, but having the layering stencils and having all of that extra texture, it really levels up your card. So again, for each of the layers of the moon, all I used was antique linen. I used the same ink in just varying amounts and it doesn't need to be perfect. And there you can see that awesome moon. So for the next step to create a perfect nighttime scene, you wanna decide what color you want your halo to be around your moon. Now, since I'm creating kind of a spooky, eerie Halloween card, I wanted mine to be this kind of yellowish green color, but you could definitely leave this in gray tones if you just want it to be kind of a normal nighttime sky. You could do this in purples or blues or reds, oranges, anything. Whatever kind of feeling you're trying to evoke or season you're working with, let that inform your decisions about whatever colors you're going to choose in order to create your nighttime scene. For example, if you're creating a nighttime scene for a Christmas card with, you know, Santa and the reindeer going across the sky, you might want to use really light blue tones for your halo because that's going to give you a nice, cool, crisp, wintry night color. So experiment, try different colors. There are lots of different styles of nighttime skies that you can create. To create a nice halo, I recommend picking two shades of a color. So I wanted this yellowish green halo. So I picked a lighter yellow green, which is the crushed olive. And that's what I used first to do a general kind of covering all the way around my moon. Then I picked a darker tone of green and I'm using that now. That is the peeled paint. So I'm bringing the peeled paint now up from each side of the card, but I'm not going all the way to the moon. I'm just kind of blending it into that crushed olive that I've already put all over on the card. So this is gonna give you that nice halo because the sky is getting darker the farther out you go on the card. Now I do recommend masking off your moon while you're doing this work. The layering stencil that I'm using, the Haunted Moon Blending Stencil, it does come with the mask for the moon. So you could tape that down with some low tack tape that you put on the back of it, 
or you can just hold it in place with your hand, which is what I'm doing. I'm not worried too, too much because this is going to have kind of this nice dreamy blended look. So it's not that big of a deal if some of the green color gets onto the moon. The other thing I'm going to do is once I'm done with the darker color, the peeled paint, I'm going to come back in here with the crushed olive and I'm going to go back over everything again. That's going to help the two colors blend together and it's really going to give it that nice halo look. Once I'm done with my greens, I'm going to come in with black soot and I'm going to go all the way around the edge, being careful not to come too far in because I really just want this to create some deep, dark edges along the outsides of the card. That really gives you the illusion that the rest of the card is kind of fading out into the night and that the only thing you can see in this beautiful nighttime sky is that big bright moon looking down at everything. So I mentioned this is the larger of the two new stencils from Pick Up Fence Studios. There is a smaller moon stencil as well. I'll link down to everything in the description of this video if you're interested but a smaller stencil, it can be really helpful if you just want to have kind of a small portion of your card dedicated to the nighttime sky. This larger moon takes up a big portion of the card, but it really just pops and makes a really beautiful nighttime background, especially if you're gonna be working with die cuts, which is what I'm gonna be working with today. This is the new A2 Ghost House cover plate die, and it is so cool. I love the spooky scene this creates. I've just put it in my splat box, and now I'm gonna come in and flick some white paint on there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and spray some Distress Mica spray. This is the color Empty Tomb, and you can see it gives it this nice spooky look. I love it. Next, I'm using the Eek Word Dye, and I've cut that out in white cardstock. And now I'm coming back in with that same crushed olive that I used before, and I'm using my paper pouncer in order to color the whole sentiment. Once I have the whole word covered, I'm going to bring in some extra just along the bottom to make it darker. This will give me kind of a light to dark gradation of the crushed olive color and it will mimic what's in my background. So it has that same kind of like spooky darkening of the word that we have on that moon background where it's getting darker as you go out. I did cut out an extra of the word dye in white cardstock and I'm actually going to use that as a white shadow. The cover plate die cuts out several of these tiny little bats as well. So what I did is I set down my ghost house piece on top just so I could get a sense of where I wanted to put the bats before I glued them down. So I'm not going to use any sequins on this card or anything like that because my bats are my little embellishments that I'm using. So now I'm coming in and gluing down the ghost house over the whole front of the card and you can see it's got that awesome moon glowing in the background with these bats flying around. I really, really love how this turned out. I think it looks so cool. So once I get that where I like it, I can then come in and add my sentiment and you can see that white shadow that I was mentioning earlier. That allows it to just pop off the card a little bit better so that it's not blending so much in with the background. And then I can finish by gluing my card panel to an A2 size card base. That's four and a quarter by five and a half. So this cover plate die works perfectly to take up the front of an A2 sized card, but you could absolutely use this on other sizes of cards as well. In fact, I think this would look really cool on a mini slimline card. Now I'm coming in here with some of the Pumpkin Patch Sequin Mix Plus. This mix has oranges and greens and browns in it and is perfect for any kind of Halloween card. You could use it for shakers. I just love the green that's in here. I think it ties in perfectly with the rest of this card. All right, guys, that finishes off my card. I hope you picked up some tips and tricks today and that you'll try this type of nighttime sky. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue bringing you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, happy crafting.